Okay, so insane, deranged madman uh, Tom Cruise has released the latest chapter in the Mission Impossible franchise. I've been waiting, I've been waiting over a year for it because it was an event that was supposed to come out uh, last year, last summer, but it got delayed a year. Uh, I even remember the teaser trailer being attached to Top Gun Maverick and be like, oh, this looks amazing. Yeah. I have to wait an entire year for it. Well, mm -hmm. here we are now. And Ben, what were your thoughts on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I watched it maybe like a week before it came out. So yeah, you got to see actually, a preview screening, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really want to watch it again because I really enjoyed it. Like, it was actually so thrilling. And I remember just thinking the whole way in my head, I was like, this is how action films are supposed to be made. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what for Indiana sure, yeah. Jones yeah. wants to be. Yeah, exactly. I felt bad yeah. for Indiana Jones at that because I was like... That, that, that's the highlight is the stunt choreography and the action choreography, how it's filmed and uh, yeah. how it's filmed yeah. and executed. It, it's, it's, the, it's the clear highlight of the film. It's how, yes, yeah, as you say, it's how action films should be made nowadays. They got yeah, that's just like what was going film. through my head at the time. Yeah, I was great. Like, oh my God, great. This is really good. Tom Cruise yeah. is killing it. Yeah, and it pretty much just like delivers exactly what you expect from a Mission Impossible film, right? Yeah, it's I... explosive. It's engaging throughout. It's emotional at times, but it's all about that action. Yeah, I I wasn't left unsatisfied from it. I mean, I must admit, I didn't leave the cinema quite as uh, elated as I was from Fallout because Fallout was just like insane. It was just stunt after stunt after stunt after stunt. After stunt. It was just intense all the way through. Uh, this I was I, I I felt was a more sensible film, you know. Yeah, more quite, sensible. Yeah, it wasn't guess, quite um, hit, it I wasn't thought, quite hitting us over the head as much. Yeah, just, yeah. Because I thought it, I thought it was nice that they kind of went back a tiny bit. Yeah, you know, it's did. still crazy. Yeah, and in a lot of the points yeah. of the film, but I like the story that they went with the AI story. Yeah, it's very it timely. Yeah, and. I just really found it engaging. I was like, it's engaging. It's, 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 it's a, yeah, and it's an interesting adversary. It's an interesting villain. And I appreciated how the film started out a bit slower. It took its time. It's not just banging you over the head with shit like a lot of major blockbusters are doing nowadays. Um, yeah, exactly. And and so I just think it's exactly what you kind of expect. Like Tom Cruise is doing what you think. Yeah. Uh, you got think, a good ensemble yeah. as well. Maybe that was part of the problem for me. It's just well, it's not. I, I, it was what I expected, but I came. I came out of the theater feeling like there's nothing particularly wrong with this. But as I say, I didn't. I, I was satisfied, but I wasn't like. I didn't have the same feeling I did when I came out. Um, out of Top Gun Maverick, where I was just like, "This is the world's a better place. The sunshine and rainbows. World peace has been achieved." But I feel I feel Top Gun Maverick is a different film in that, uh, yeah, he goes on a mission, right, and he does crazy shit. Yeah. But I feel Top Gun Maverick was more about like the legacy. This is about continuing the legacy. It's about moving forward. Yes. And so they found a cool villain, and they're like, "This is part one for part two. Get ready for part two. That's true. Yeah. Some people like Spider Verse find it a bit not perfect end on a cliffhanger like that yeah. right i yeah. mean i liked it and i like it yes it feels a little bit unsatisfying but when you get to that second film you're going to be like okay yeah like, i was watch actually it back to back yeah, after i was actually satisfied with the ending i think they did actually that was one of the things i thought they did a very good job was making it feel complete within its own context but still had you pumped for the next installment yeah i, mean, I wish I wish they did a sort of Back to the Future Part 2 thing with that, where they had like a mini trailer for the next one. Attack. That would have been cool. That would have I mean, been great. they shoved them back to back, right? Well, that was the initial plan, but I think it got abandoned halfway through because it was just, the first one was taking too long to film and it was too complicated because of COVID. So I think they just, they are, they were filming it just before the strike happened. So mm. it could be a case of it's not complete enough for them to whip up a teaser trailer to put up on the end of this. But yeah. I don't know. There wasn't anything. Didn't, like that. didn't I they like shoot that. this back in uh, when all the lockdowns were happening? Yeah, this film is like three years old, essentially. They started shooting this in like November 2020, and yeah. it was like an 18-month shoot on and off. I think they were still filming stuff for this like up until like early last year. You know, I, 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 could, I could tell because 
in the first scene, I guess we're, let's let's sort of shift a bit into spoilers at this point. So the first scene, uh, well, one of the first scenes where uh, Tom Cruise is talking to, I'm just going to call him Tom Cruise, by the way, because he's essentially yeah. playing himself <laughs> in these movies. Tom Cruise is talking to Henry, Henry Zerny. And I noticed that it, it, the, the equivalent shots in the trailer were different to the ones which were in the film. Tom looked a bit older, so I'm mm-hmm. thinking they might have may, may have reshot that scene like like early last year. What scene are you talking about specifically? It's, it's the scene where he gasses <laughs> all the people, gasses all the officials in the office, mm. and then takes the mask off and reveals that it's Tom Cruise who gassed everyone. And he has that conversation with Henry Zerny about why, you know, this is, you know, this, this, this is a, you know, integral, isn't it? you know, you need to pick a side, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The shots look mm-hmm. different to how. I also, I felt like, uh, you know, the, the chase scene, you know, when he's chasing the train. Yeah. I felt like a couple of times when we cut back to him, he looked a bit older. Yeah, I, I feel know. like I feel like some reshoots happened last year. And they just haven't told us because, like they mm. said, they keep saying to they keep on saying on and on to Christopher McQuarrie and Tom Cruise. They basically shoot this on the fly about a completed script, which just seems insane to me. But they just somehow managed to pull it off. I mean, not quite as flawlessly here as they did in the last two installments. From my perspective, I feel like there is a little too much exposition, a little too much beating the audience over the head with what the entity is and what it. Uh, what its goal is. It's like they established it in all the first 20 minutes with like long dialogue sequences. But then they sort of re-went over it like in the middle of the film during that ball in in, uh, in Venice, that yeah. event, which is revealed to be sort of the entity's like hideout in a way. Sort of mm-hmm. like, and it looks a bit like a blue version of the Eye of Sauron from Lord of the Rings, which I found quite funny. But yeah, I felt that scene was a little bit too much. Okay, we just got characters just sitting down, telling the audience what the plot is, and I'm like, you know, this isn't be really being done uh, particularly stylishly, unlike the rest of the film. It's being it's beating the audience over the head with with exposition. I thought personally. I mean, what did you think? Yeah, at times I could tell the exposition yeah. was a bit too much, but yeah. <clears throat> Compared to other films, that yeah, it's, that's the thing. Things. It's not as bad as like other. It's not yeah. as bad as like the Flash, which is just literally the film stops to deliver exposition, for example. And it's not as yeah. bad as other superhero films or other major blockbusters. It's not as bad, but I felt I could notice it a bit more in this installment than in the previous two Macquarie films. For me personally speaking, what was the one before Fallout? Uh, Rogue Nation. Rogue Nation. Yeah. Well, I felt like I felt like those two were a bit more slick. In terms of their uh, presentation, not just the action, in terms of the film overall, the more yeah. slick in terms of how they presented this one does have a tendency to stop a little bit for characters to tell each other what the plot is, which mm-hmm. was like again, it's not quite as bad as other examples from other films, but I still felt it was a, a a minor issue. Yeah, no, I can see that. Yeah, I also I wasn't a big fan of how they uh, handled Ilse's death. I mean, uh, what did you think about that? Yeah, that was like, <clears throat> for me, I don't know. I felt like pretty bad about it. I was like, oh, shit. Like, why do we need to get rid of her? Yeah, exactly. It, felt like, really it felt, like, felt like Tom was pushing her aside so he could get the younger, prettier Taking lady. another lady. woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just felt a bit arbitrary. And they just, it's like, it's like Tom's on the side by the railing looking a bit glum, like, <sighs> And then, like eight seconds later, he's going. And it's like, okay, this is what we're going to do. It's the rest of the mission. It's just like it felt like, come on, guys, this, you, you must know. It. And like, Macquarie and Cruz must have been in the editing room and being like, oh, this is a bit clumsy, isn't it? And it feels clumsy. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> it's kind of unlikely, but maybe Ilsa is going to be in the next one. We'll see. Because <laughs> that's the only explanation in my head. Because they must know that that was a clumsy way of of killing her off. It's like. It, I mean, what do you think? Do you th- do you think it was a clumsy way? Am I am I being a bit too harsh? Uh I don't think it being that harsh because <clears throat> I kind of agree with you. So yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. I think overall, as a film, <clears throat> it really works as a first part, and I yeah. like what they're doing. But yeah, maybe there's some stuff that's like, okay, it was his death. 
you know, so happy when she's alive, like after you think she's dead. Yeah. Right? You're like, oh, pretty cool. Um, yeah. But then the new character played by Hayley Atwell. Hayley Atwell. She was cool. You know, did the action stuff. Um, I like that train scene. It was pretty, pretty entertaining. Oh, yeah, it was very. And, all, and all seeing very the weird. reveal of yeah. uh, what's his face? Gabriel. Yeah. Um, when he realizes he doesn't have the thing, <laughs> I was like, ha. That was they cool. actually yeah, outsmarted yeah. you. Yeah, so. I, I like that. Some people have been complaining about Gabriel, but I liked him as a villain. Some of his dialogue could be a bit flowery at points, again, especially during that Venetian ball sequence. But I thought he was a perfectly decent uh, villain. Yeah, I liked him as a villain. Yeah, I fine. thought he was a good yeah. villain. Yeah, yeah, I thought he served that purpose quite quite well. And as I say, I liked that whole train sequence. Um, the film takes a lot of cues from the old James Bond films, quite obviously from, you know, uh, the, 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 the chase, the car chase is reminiscent from the car chase and Fury eyes only. It's like a mixture of the Fury eyes only car chase and the tomorrow never dies bike chase with Michelle Yeoh and Tom Cruise, are hand, uh, Michelle Yeoh and Pierce Brosnan, excuse me, are handcuffed together. And it's just like a combination of that. And you've got a bit of the Rome chase respect. There's like a combination of all those ideas, but I felt they, they had a, a, enough of their own original ideas mixed in that, that I didn't feel like it was a total rip off from someone yeah. who's a fan of those films. I thought it's like, okay, you're doing enough original stuff to get away with it. I felt the same thing with the train sequence. The train sequence is an obvious, um, it's a, it's a, it's a mix of the train sequence from Octopussy and the train sequence from Skyfall. But I felt yeah. okay. There's enough original material going on here that it it didn't take me out. It's like okay, I can I can go with this. I mean, I know you're not as big as a fan of the James Bond films as I am, yeah. so you might not have realized that as much. But yeah, I just thought compared to most action films I've seen recently, like if you count, oh, what have I seen? Um, Fast and Furious. Um... Yeah. I mean, yeah, this is far more credible. <laughs> Fast and Furious. I mean, Indiana Fast Jones. and Furious. There's a bit in it. Where Vin Diesel literally just he just slams his car into the side <laughs> of a wall, and it's just like you, at the very least you'd be a quadriplegic after that. And he just like he just drives away and it's fine. The car would be just a write off. He'd be in hospital with his yeah his neck severed, but he's he's fine. And he can I just mean, drive off. It's fucking way ridiculous. better than Uncharted last year. Or speaking of Uncharted, the train sequence at the end was a clear take from you probably haven't. It's a clear take from Uncharted two. It's so obviously inspired by that. I know you haven't uh, probably haven't played it, but yeah. for those who have played Uncharted 2, it's a clear take from a sequence in that game. And again, I could I could have been quite annoyed by that, but I still felt that the the the, the film executed it uh, in its own way well enough that I wasn't too bothered by it. I mean, it was a little bit too much CGI <laughs> for my liking, but. Compared to a lot of other blockbusters this year, there's a lot less CGI than you see in those. Yeah, movies. and even last year, like um, as much as I actually liked the Grey Man and Bullet Train, yeah, I feel like this was much better. Oh, this is another, this is on another level quite easily. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, and it's better than. I mean, it's up there. Like, it's debatable. Is this better or is this worse than Top Gun Maverick? I feel the maybe Top Gun slightly over it. Yeah. Um, I feel like Top Gun was more charming. It was a more charming film. Yeah. And more up, more uplifting film, especially in the I last... I mean, time. this film is, uh, like I said, it's a big franchise that yeah. they've, you know, Top Gun was just the second film after a long time. Yeah. We had to get introduced to the characters. Here it's less about the characters. It's more about the story. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah. yeah exactly. You've got to get yeah. to that point. But like we said with Indiana Jones, I feel like, this yeah, there was the MacGuffin, you know, but it felt less MacGuffin-y than it was fun. Indiana they Jones. they had fun with it, Un yeah. unlike with Indiana Jones, where it's like it's like it felt a bit more robotic. With this, at least having fun with the MacGuffin, where it keeps being, you know, I think that's why Haley Atwell's character was in it as a thief, is to add that 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 spice of it being sort of like a, a heist thriller. It's like this yeah, it, the key, and they lose the key, then the keys. Are, it feels it less it. less structured. Like yeah, uh, Indiana Jones felt like they thought of a set piece. They thought yeah. the next one, the next one, the next one. This felt like they did some, some random stuff here and there, but it was like all along one line. Yeah, you know? I mean, this is the same, but they did it better and more smoothly. More smooth, yeah. yeah. Can I just point out, by the way, how, you know, 
as much as I admire and respect Tom Cruise on a filmmaking basis for his dedication towards it, I can't help but see him as a as a bit of a joke figure sometimes. I mean, and especially in this one, I felt his ego was a bit out of control. Like in every right. fucking scene, he 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 introduces himself in a sort of quirky, like very sort of oh look at me sort of manner. It's just like the, it's like when he does that thing with his sleeve and he just like pops the key out. It's like it's like a magic trick. Or it's like when he's in Italy and he comes but behind the books and he's like dressed as a librarian. It's just like it's like it's got almost going into self-parody at this point. How yeah, but, Cruise loves know, himself. I think he embraces that. Yeah, it could be a case of he's 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 poking fun at himself a little bit as a bit tongue in cheek, but it's it was I it was it, it 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 became noticeable in this film that every scene he's introduced in like some sort of epic, you know. Yeah funny man way um, yeah but i i it's not to say that he's not good at acting i think he's actually very good like yeah look at top gun i thought he was really good in top gun yeah he's a very um, he's a very a very good leading man yeah, yeah that's for certain he's, he's great very good leading um man. i mean you can just go back and look at i think his best film is eyes wide shut i think he's so good in that yeah the kubrick's last film yeah, yeah. Um, and I think he's still got it. It's just like now, obviously, his focus is more, you know, creating these big events, yeah, creating yeah. massive, crazy project. stuff that yeah. people can't yeah. believe. And I yeah. think it's cool that we yeah. got someone like that. He's like the Christopher Nolan of actors. Yeah, well, he kind of <laughs> like know? to go even further back. He's got a sort of Howard Hughes sort of vibe about him in a way, where he's like this sort of kooky director man. Who has yeah. an obsession with all sorts of things on the side, whether it be airplanes or yeah. skydiving or whatever, and wants to put that all in the biggest film he can possibly yeah. uh possibly conjure up. He's sort of a bit like a you know, a circus entertainer in a way. It's just like come, come and look at Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning. It's got the biggest stunts in the world, it's the most epic action event in cinema you'll see this decade, but yeah, it's yeah. Sort of that bigness he's got about him. Which, like, he does, he does. Yeah. yeah, he's got that. You know, people always debate about movie stars. Like, is there actually any that can draw Tom Cruise that draws? Like, people say, oh, you're going to see new Tom Cruise. It's not, are oh, you going to see Mission Impossible? Ways. Yeah. It's like. Well, I'm not calling his character Ethan Hunt. Um, I'm, no, I'm you're calling him Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. No, yeah. I, I think overall, this film really entertaining it's thrilling it's got great yeah. action yeah and this is what all action films should be or should yes. be striving towards i completely agree with that i mean i had a little a few more minor quibbles with the film than you did but i largely agree with you in terms of this is how action films should be shot and how they should be edited and how they should be um uh, con- uh con- how, how they should be conceived that's how they should be yeah. conceived this sort of energy and this sort of fun and this sort of tension. Um, that's that's this is the sort of example we should be following, unlike the the cartoonish CGI-ness we saw in Indiana Jones. Yeah, like we shouldn't be copying the uncharted way of doing things or no. anything like that. No, no, no. Follow it's... Tom Cruise, follow you know, someone that John really Wick cares about John Wick's action. another yeah, example. Follow John this, Wick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, you get a sense of uh, uh, it's grounded. It's grounded in some form of reality that you can believe the stunts, you know? Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, but no, oh. fans of it, I mean, as I say, I'm not quite as enthusiastic as you are, but I'm a fan and I thought it was a solid time. Look forward yeah. to another review of you, Ben, and it's been a good one this this uh, this time. Let's do let's do Oppenheimer next Yes. Time. I'm I'm looking forward to that. You gotta I see have, that. I have things it's to sold say. out everywhere. You know, oh shit, no shit, really, yeah. Until I, August, I have I have things to say about the back catalog, Christopher Nolan, which may be controversial to some, but I would like to uh, see the reaction to it. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, just to tease you. For <laughs> I'm that. a big fan. I'm a yeah, big fan. Yeah. So but no, but yeah, no. Thanks for joining me, Ben, and I'll see you on the next one. Yep. See you guys later. Mm-hmm.